Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning. It's great to be here gathered with you on the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee God and Nishnabek peoples. I'm Reverend Susan Cole, minister here at Knox United Church in Embro, and I welcome you to our in person and online worship today, June the 25th. 2023 and what a beautiful day it is today. I would also like to give a warm welcome. Do we have our Taiwanese people here? I don't think so. I don't see any newcomers in here today. So we were hoping, uh, I did get a message from Michael Staten, who lives in Waterloo, that they are filming again something to do with uh, George Leslie Mackay and that they might make their way here uh, for worship today. Um, so I was hoping to see them. Uh, uh, the flowers here are in memory of Graham Hart Poppy uh, from his great grandchildren Ella and Blake. Let us sing together our gathering hymn. <laughs> now for our responsive call to worship. Into our wilderness God comes and says, do not be afraid for I have heard your voice. When we ask for a sign of love, God comes and provides all we need. The old ways have been put to death, and we are made alive with Christ. Jesus says, those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. Come, let us worship in faith our faithful God. Thank you. 
in spirit-filled courage as we move out into our lives and into the world with the gospel message of your love and salvation for all. Hold us close in times of fear and raise us to new hope as we work to create your kingdom. Amen. Join me for our opening hymn, War of Voices 135, called by Earth and Sky. down by the river, listening to the water, uh, as Sharon Fraser and I um, spoke of uh, indigenous issues and, um, and worshiped uh, celebrating the indigenous peoples. So keep that in mind in the future. We're hoping to make it a, a yearly event, at least. Let us pray. God of Pentecostal splendor, we are on fire with good news. We sing, dance, and live in your glory. Whisper in the wind the message of empathy. Shouts 
shout in storms the wonder of compassion, spark in us the joy of faith-filled living. May your word to us today become more than we can imagine. Amen. First scripture is from Matthew. A disciple is not above the teacher, nor the slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear for them. For nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not be made known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others will also acknowledge, be acknowledged before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to, come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves daughter or son more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. The, sex, sex, uh, excuse me, the second reading is from Micah 6, 8. God has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. May God bless these words to our deeper understanding and our daily walk. It will tongue tie. I confess, I was at a wedding last night, didn't get to bed till 2 a.m., so you know. <laughs> Here I am, as I am. <laughs> I've been thinking a lot about June being Pride Month. <clears throat> and in a statement about Pride Month on the United Church of Canada website, it starts off like this. As June begins with sunshine, warmth, and the fragrance of spring flowers, Pride celebrations begin to take place in communities across the country. We wish the Two-Spirit and LGBTQIA plus community, wherever they live, a happy Pride Month. Thank you for your commitment to activism, to carving out space in places where there is reluctance and fear. Activism by people around the world who are lesbian, gay, bisexual, trans, and queer, as well as their straight allies, take great courage. And while we have come far, there is still far to go. We know that in many places around the world, living proudly still risks criminalization and even death. <laughs> The situation is made worse by some governments enacting laws that are anti-Two-Spirit LGBTQIA+. The journey is long. 
the Two-Spirit LGBTQIA plus community in Canada knows all too well how acts of violence and vandalism intend to intimidate and destroy our progress. The rise in hate crimes, especially against people who are trans, is disconcerting. Religious-induced homophobia, transphobia, and biphobia is real and is a contributing factor to these very public expressions of hate crimes. As a church, we know we have an even greater responsibility to demonstrate solidarity. The United Church of Canada stands with the 2S LGBTQIA plus community inside and outside the church. It is clear there is still much work to do to ensure that all 2S LGBTQIA plus people experience security, freedom from discrimination, and full equality. This June, especially the last two weeks, I have also been thinking a lot about one of our Knox United Church members, Graham Hart, who died unexpectedly on Monday, June the 12th, and his funeral was this past Wednesday, June the 21st, the first day of summer, National Indigenous Peoples Day, the day that Graham's family and friends and many community members from various parts of Graham's life gathered to honor their loved one, a man well-liked and admired. Because I've been thinking a lot about Graham this Pride Month, when I sat down to work on my reflection this week, it was through that lens, through that experience, that I read the scriptures. Have no fear. Do not be afraid. Take up the cross. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. Today's Matthew scripture is part of the instructions that Jesus is giving his disciples to ready them for the work that he calls them and us to. Jesus models for us. He's the one we are to emulate in the world. And not everything about following Jesus looks like it's going to be smooth sailing. Jesus came to ruffle feathers. And he calls us to do the same. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. What does that mean exactly? Does Jesus come to promote violence? Not at all. Like in all study of scripture, it's important for us to understand these stories in the context that they were written. Jesus is not using a sword to stab, but to cut. He speaks of divisions within families and within communities. He says, I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Cleo LaRue, professor of homiletics at Princeton Theological Seminary, teaches us that, and I quote, it is quite likely that the community for which Matthew wrote had experienced such family divisions and that some followers had been turned out of their families. His coming calls forth decisions every day of our lives as to whom we will serve. The claims of the gospel can and will split families. End quote. He speaks of the time when the early Christians were gathering 
remembering Jesus, holding up his teachings. But the Jewish faith from which they were from was, were pushing against that and questioning it. Scary business following Jesus and living out the teachings of the gospel. And Jesus knows we will fear the, feel the fear because he mentions it three times in today's scripture. Have no fear. Do not fear. Be not afraid. It seems next to impossible to take up the cross, especially if we're to take up the same cross that Jesus took up, the cross of shame and pain, humiliation and death, and not be terrified. Like Jesus, are we to take up a cross that shows our family, our friends, and our community, the world, that we have made a commitment to being amongst those willing to resist empire? Are we being called to love others as he loved us and challenge racism, sexism, ageism, oppression of the marginalized, the discrimination of those different from us, the status quo? Are we called to speak up against religious-induced homophobia, transphobia, and biphobia? Yes. Yes, we are called to challenge, to risk facing conflict, and even estrangement. Graham Hart faced many conflicts as he lived his life as a disciple of Jesus, but he also made it look effortless. And I think that's because he accepted the things he couldn't control. He accepted them as they were, even though it was not how he would like things to be. And then, and then he worked to change things for the betterment of others. He would ask people to envision how they would like things to be, and then he would remind them, well, it is what it is. But then he would say, if you want things to change, it's not going to be easy. It's going to take A, B, and C to happen first. It's going to be a lot of tough work up front. And even then, there are no guarantees that it will work out. I believe we are called to try and envision and then work toward a hate-free, loving, inclusive community where those struggling are lifted up, encouraged, and accepted. And the rights of all people are upheld. It's time to get the ABC of the situation going. In 1970, after Graham and his wife Eleanor were married, they joined CUSO, Canadian University Services Overseas, a government-run program, and they decided to go to Nigeria to teach for a few years. They would be temporarily relieving uh, Nigerian teachers, so those teachers could go to university and improve their education. A month before Eleanor and Graham planned to go, there was a military coup in Nigeria. The situation was unstable and there was a lot of tension, but Eleanor and Graham still planned to go. Did they think of the risks? Yes, but they also believed that there were risks everywhere, every day, and our ability to give back was worth taking the risks. For Eleanor and Graham, it wasn't even a matter of consciously taking risks. It was just what they did, because it was the right thing to do, and because they could help others, they did what they could. Graham didn't even think of his helping of others as a sacrifice. He would say, it is not a sacrifice, it's an investment. It's not a sacrifice, it's an investment. Like investing in God's kingdom. Graham was a person who lived out his faith, and he knew his purpose was to help others. And he followed the call of Micah 6, 8, 
the prophet asks and answers. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Graham walked humbly with God, and he was embarrassed if people tried to shower him with accolades. He would always redirect the attention to the people or cause that he was supporting. I joked with Darren a few days ago that I could only talk about Graham Hart now after his death because he would be much too embarrassed to hear that I was lifting him up during worship. But he's sitting right there still. <laughs> God is calling us to take risks. And maybe that doesn't mean we join the march or give away all our money or stop eating meat because it's better for the planet because we're beef farmers or move to a war-torn country. But maybe it could mean that we take more risks of the heart. We allow ourselves to make ourselves vulnerable, to take the risk of being hurt. Maybe that's how we give up our lives. Lose our lives that we imagined we might have had or that we hoped we would have. And just accept the lives we do have. And give it up for the life of challenges or ruffling feathers or possibly making mistakes and possible heartache and being vulnerable in order to heal the world. This might be exactly what we need to do to create the kingdom of God. We are being called to help heal the world and contribute to God's kingdom. And our faith might lead us into dangerous situations, conflict, and unfamiliar territory. Just look at the state of the world at present. The town of Norwich is struggling. A division has been created between a conservative Christian church who are engaging in actions of hate, specifically against the LGBTQ2 community. There are people who do not feel safe living in that community. There have been multiple stories of church members visiting businesses and threatening them to boycott if they don't close on Sundays. People being asked not to play with their children or cut their lawns on Sundays. People being asked, sorry, the church even had enough power to sway the local government to pass a controversial bylaw banning non-civic flags, including pride and progress banners, from being flown on municipal property. Global News reported that, and I quote, the town has since devolved into a culture war between the town's religious and secular sects. Pride flags flying from private homes are routinely stolen. Town Facebook pages for and against LGBTQ rights are filled with slurs and bigotry. Rainbow chalk drawings and posters mysteriously appear about town in solidarity with the gay community, only to be angrily ripped down and scrubbed away. The other reports of what is happening in Norwich are very disturbing and echo the hate crimes happening in the United States. A lifelong Norwich resident said his house was shot at. A dead skunk was left on his lawn and people have screamed obscenities at him. Tara King, who ran for the NDP in 2019 provincial election, had her signs defaced, her Facebook page hacked. She had her horses shot at with a firearm while her daughters were in the paddock. Another resident whose house and yard is adorned with 118 pride flags and other rainbow-colored motifs sits on his porch after midnight to watch out for vandals. And when the flags are stolen, he orders more to replace them. This is happening right here in our 
Oxford County. And this is why it's important that we take the risk to say what Jesus tells us in the dark and tell it in the light. And what we hear whispered, we are to proclaim from the housetop. We must proclaim ourselves as LGBTQ2 supporters, because if we have the opportunity to support and help those being ostracized and persecuted on the grounds of their sexual orientation or gender identity, we need to step up, be seen, and be heard, if only to show people in our community an alternative to the hate and judgment of other Christian churches. If only to show young people afraid to come out for fear of being harmed, that not all churches hate them, that some churches do live out the call by Jesus to love and support all people. Last evening, I officiated the wedding of a same-sex couple. I announced that I was a minister in the United Church of Canada, and I was completely floored that people cheered and clapped and celebrated. And I said, that's your national church, people. If you don't know about it, find out about it. Shout it from the housetops. And afterwards, people came up to me, and a woman came up to me, and she said, oh my gosh, that was such a wonderful service, and I'm so glad you said this, and I'm so glad you included that. And that, that is why I'm a member of the United Church of Canada. We might experience the pain of divisions in our families and our communities. There is no sugar coating on answering the call to discipleship that Jesus, he warns us from the start. I'm telling you, it's not going to be easy. It's going to be difficult and scary, and it may cause you some anxiety. But God is with you. Do not be afraid. So take up the cross but expect trouble. And if we're looking for trouble, like the title of Reverend Mark Marshall and my podcast, in living our lives and our churches and communities in the world, if we're looking for that trouble, we can also find ways to stir up good trouble and invite ways of healing in the world. Jesus assures us, do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear the one who can destroy the soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall on the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. God's promise to be with us is not a promise that will not be hurt, that will not struggle, that it won't be difficult, that it won't divide us. This is a promise that our souls will remain. We are called to live like Jesus. And Jesus went to certain people in the communities that didn't have a voice, that were oppressed, the marginalized, the newcomers, the immigrants, those living in poverty, those with physical and mental challenges, those seen by society as worthless deviants. And he redefined their worth. If we follow in the footsteps of Jesus, this action to redefine the worth of all people might make some see us as radical table turners. It might cause conflict 
within our usual circles. And it may even make us liable to be counted as one of the deviants. But if we are going to answer our calls to daring discipleship, along with those who have gone before us, if we are going to be counted among Jesus' daring disciples and take risks to help others, then let us do it with our eyes and our hearts wide open. <coughs> May we be comforted by the fact that Jesus has helped combat our fear by warning us of the conflicts to come when we step up and ask for justice and the assurance of God's presence with us in every step we take. Let us join our hearts together in prayer as I pray Psalm 86 from Nan Merrill's book, Psalms for Praying. Let us pray. Give ear to my cry, O Comforter, and answer me, for I am solely in need of you. Awaken new life in me as I yearn to do your will. Dispel the ignorance of my ways as I put my trust in you. You are the beloved. Be gracious to me, heart of my heart. For with you would I walk all day. My soul is uplifted as I abandon myself into your hands. For you are kind and forgiving, abounding in steadfast love to all who call upon you. Give ear to my prayer, compassionate one. Listen to my heartfelt plea. In the time of trouble, I dare to call upon you, for you hear the cries of those in me. O oh, beloved, this numerous fears rise up within me. Like an army, they seek to overwhelm me, and they would keep me in darkness. Yet you are merciful and gracious, ready to forgive and ever abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. Be present to me and receive my prayer. Imbue me with strength and help me to release each fear. Pour forth your light into my soul that all that is hidden in darkness may come forth into awareness. For you, O oh beloved, are my Redeemer and my Comforter. Amen. Let us sing together from More Voices 178, Who is My Mother?
we allow it to control us and become the focus of our lives, whether it's hoarding or scarce, it's a problem. On the other hand, we can't live in today's capitalist world without it. Generosity is the solution. When you give, you reflect God's abundant love and caring through your gifts. As followers of Jesus, we are called to use our money to help atone and to bring justice and mercy and hope to the world we live in. For those in the pews, the offering plates can be found just outside the sanctuary door. And for those joining us online, your offerings can be made through PAR, e-transfer, or by check. Amy Crawford has been doing ministry with youth and young adults for almost 30 years, and she's never been more excited about the future of leadership, youth leadership, in the church. Your gift to mission and service will help inspire and support youth programming and engagement. Let's listen and learn more. Yeah, so it's just not able to. Work. All right. Um, there's some really great informational videos uh, that you can find online talking about all the places that mission and service money is used. So please take time to, um, to see where your money goes and, and what great things it does. Let us pray. Generous God, thank you for this opportunity to give and be generous. We heard your whisper and took to the rooftops. Help us spread the joy of giving and inspire others to do the same. Amen.
fire. Beautiful. Today at 2 p.m., Knox Presbyterian Church will be hosting the rededication of the Memorial Tug of War Cairn. Uh, it was to happen at North Ambrose Cemetery, but because of all the rain and with the grass, the mosquitoes are very active right now, and so they've decided they will move that service to the Presbyterian Church today at 2 o'clock. It's the 130th anniversary of the Chicago Fair in 1893 when six local farmers won the Tug of War Championship against teams across the globe. There's going to be live music from Allison Lupton, uh, Ingersoll Pipe Band, and Paul Tree. So wear your tartan and come out and enjoy some unique local history. There is no worship next Sunday on July the 2nd, so I hope you enjoy your time on Saturday at the Highland Games here in Embro. The Sunday after, we're going to be celebrating our Food Truck Gratitude Festival, a way for the church to thank the community uh, for all the support that we've enjoyed over the years and the continued support uh, meeting our expectations for our outreach. And um, so please tell your friends and your neighbors, uh, anyone visiting from out of town for the summer, come over to the church, uh, buy some of your lunch at the food trucks, enjoy fellowship under the shade, in the shade of the, under the trees on the lawn, and we'll have lawn games. And of course, this year we have the splash pad, so I expect you all to bring your bathing suits. <laughs> so that should be fun. Since when, when can you wear your bathing suit to church and it's okay? Come on, that's like a once in a lifetime thing, right? So, and then uh, the weekend after that, on July 16th, we'll be starting our outdoor services here on the lawn at Knox. Um, we started those during COVID as a necessity, and then we grew to just love them. It's a more casual time. Uh, sometimes there's more opportunity for conversation and, and gathering. And uh, I think we'll also be uh, selling, uh, offering vegetables for donation. Um, what, what, it goes to the food that Grains Bank holds? Yes. So uh, if you have some uh, ex excess produce in your garden, uh, flowers perhaps, uh, I don't know what's happening inside. I've got lots of lettuce in my garden and spinach and things. Um, feel free to bring them along. Are there any other announcements that need to be made at this time? I see Steve, Steve Dow standing up. Come on up, Steve. Good morning, Good morning, everyone. Uh, first of all, Susan, thanks for your message today. I have a very good friend whose uh, his son has come out as trans in the last uh, several years, and we we're very excited and pleased for uh, Marin as she makes this brave choice. But it is a real challenging time for people to go through. It's hard on families. It's hard on people. But we are always. Uh, supportive and excited for Marin as she goes through this choice. But I want to thank you for highlighting this. This is an important message that we need to get to our community. And I was very pleased to text my friend this week because he had heard from another friend who said he'd heard that churches wouldn't marry somebody trans. And I was very pleased to be able to forward the United Church of Canada website that does makes it very clear about third item down that we are a welcoming church to all people. So, love is love. Love is love. So anyways, I just really wanted to highlight uh, moving a little forward from July 16th, the August long weekend is Tractor Pull Weekend. So I want to, we will be, uh, I will be looking for volunteers because truthfully I've lost two this year. Uh, Graham Hart is a pretty, was a pretty active volunteer at the Tractor Pull. And Gord Richards was actually a very active volunteer at the tractor pull. Of course, Gord's not here in town anymore, and not able to, so I'm looking around the church, because if those two can help, there's a lot of us who can take a shift. We're gonna make it simpler, we're gonna make it less work. We've got lots of great gloves, not to make it too gross. <laughs> and it's a great chance to go to see uh, Wayne and Mary Ellen's shed, too, which is used for a different 
option that we can. So, anyways, uh, we'll, there'll be an announcement this week. But if anybody, if everybody could take a couple hours and give us a hand, it's a great fundraiser for our church and something that's important. And lastly, a couple weeks ago, we did have our property on it. We walked around the church and we looked at some things that we thought about, think about. Um, so, anyways, we're kind of excited about some options and to uh, see what happens with that. As council will be discussing that further, and we'll come up with some future plans around the building. Looking forward to it. Have a great summer, everyone. So they are even from the mouths of babes, dying, daring discipleship. Yes, thank you. Let us pray. Jesus, your call to us, your disciples, is to go. Go out into the world to learn and grow with community in the Spirit. Through our prayers today, we offer ourselves to you. We hear your call to go and listen for what that means in our lives. Gracious God, you call us into the places of this world that are thirsty for your grace and care. 
We know that your call to go is not a simple one. And still we thank you for trusting us with this incredible task. As we go, may we remember the people and places in the world and in our communities that are most in need of care this time. <laughs> we lift all of our prayers to you, God of faithful love, daring discipleship, and bold beginnings. Bless us now as we pray in the way of Jesus, saying, Our Heavenly Parent, our Mother and our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please stand as you are able and sing together, Voices United, 288, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
calling us to take courage, to be not afraid, and to venture forth as daring disciples. God tells us, do not be afraid. Jesus tells us, have no fear. The psalmist tells us, God is abounding in steadfast love. Let us go out to our work unafraid. Let us go out to our ministries confident that God is with us. Let us go out to our discipleship in newness of life. Let us go out to our service with grace and strength. Where God leads, we go with confidence. Where God sends, we go with faith. Thank you.